to order. This meeting is being held in accordance with the public laws of 1975, Chapter 231. An adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a notice sent to the Star Ledger, the local source, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the township website. I will ask that you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I also now ask for a respectful moment of silence for all those who serve our country, both near and not so near. Thank you. Roll call, Ms. Donnelly. Mayor Capitis. Here. Deputy Mayor Weber. Here. Committee Woman Dubois. Here. Committee Min Uber is not with us. Committee Min Kaiser. Present. Thank you, everybody. Uh, as always, we'll start off with our announcements. Uh, first, on a som somber note, the township extends his condol our condolences to the family of Herb Sloat, who passed away at the age of 102 on July 16th. He had served several terms on the township committee, including mayor. Other organizations that Mr. Sloat was involved in included Olmstead Park Conservatory, Kiwanis Club, Springfield Public Library, Springfield Historical Society, the Counting Ball House, the Master Gardens, and Historical Tree Preservation Committee. Also condolences to the family of retired police Lieutenant Ivan Chapau, who passed away in Florida on July 31st. Mr. Chapau had been employed by the police department from 1976 to 2001. Um, just a, a, a note, uh, personally, I had known uh, Mr. Sloat. I probably met him when he was about 96. Uh, when I first moved to Springfield, um, he did not, he certainly had uh, a lot of energy for being 96, the nicest, sweetest man you'll ever meet. Um, very sharp, very with it and uh, great talk, great talk to. And, and of course, you know, always um, very knowledgeable about things, both in the Springfield and beyond. So he surely will be missed. Um, Springfield Recreation and Boxcar present drive-in movie nights Thursday, August 13th. We've had two events so far, and we've had two sellouts. Um, I just want to, you know, again, just thanks to our DPW and our recreation department and Adam and Brendan and everybody there who really helped out tremendously with those events. They're very well received. It was very well attended. Uh, this last movie had more kids, more children than the last one. Um, thanks to State Farm and Mike Scalera for donating the concessions. Um, awesome. And I believe tickets just became available, I think, this morning or yesterday. Um, so make sure that you go to Boxcar and sign up because the tickets do go fast. Um, Farmer's Market has been going on on Mondays through October 26th. Uh, please visit on the corner of Mountain and North Trivet from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's every Monday. Um, finally, obviously, we're, we're still going through the uh, after effects of uh, our, our storm that we had. I was just on the phone with our um, regional manager just a short while ago. Uh, we're only down to a couple of houses here and there that are still without power for various reasons. Um, but they're soon to be up and, and will be up by the end of today. Um, just a couple of notes on that before I proceed and open it up to the township committee for, for any announcements that they had. I know we've had this storm and I obviously it's, it's been very hard hit by us. Um, our representative, uh, her name is Carol Bianchi. She has agreed to uh, be at a meeting with us. Even if we have to have a special meeting specifically to talk JCP and L, uh, she has agreed to, to be on with us. Uh, when all of the, uh, the uh, power in the areas that she covers have been restored. So once that happens and she gets a debrief from the JCP and L people, she will be uh, in attendance at a meeting and, and, and we very, very likely will have a special meeting at some point in the near future to have you voice your concerns. Um, I'd like to thank the Township Committee uh, for, for all the work they've done to help through this storm. We obviously try to give out all the information as much as we could when we have it whether it was good, bad, indifferent, whatever type of news it was, we wanted to make sure that, that our residents were as informed as possible. Um, special thanks to the DPW, fire department, police department, 
OEM, auxiliary administration, first aid, and uh, obviously a, a very special thanks to Deputy Mayor Chris Weber being his eyes and ears on the ground. I know he spent a lot of time with a lot of residents as our other uh, Township Committee members did, but I, I really do appreciate uh, his efforts and uh, as far as, you know, we were on the phone every day, a couple of day, times a day and his updates and what was going on. And he was kind of the eyes and the ears, the operation in town. And I really do appreciate his efforts um, being my eyes and ears and just, just taking care of our residents. But, and we, it's a great team effort that we all, uh, all have. Um, with that, I would like to uh, open up this township committee, have any announcements or anything else they would like to share at this time. Yeah, I'll follow up on your storm thing. So, you know, the, the calls I had with Carol, we're going to go into this a little more in depth. Um, you know, it, it was just kicked around and it's really, you know, I'm hoping it's going to go somewhere. I'm not sure. But um, I think, you know, I know you and I have talked about it. All of us have talked about it. Uh the generator, I want to start a generator. I want to see if we can develop a generator program with JCPNL and see if we can be a little less dependent on the grid and see if we can, you know, have some kind of home dependence. And, and Carol actually thought it was a pretty good idea. She's going to bring it to her people at JCPNL and um, we'll end up having a few meetings on it and uh, see if we can get something out of it. See if we can, whether it's a discount, whether it's installation, whether it's, you know, um, something from the power company that can help us, you know, move along and, and, and not have to worry about this a little further. So that's something that we'll be kicking around. Uh, you'll hear from in, in the next few months. Thank you. Anyone else? Alex, uh, Committeeman Kaiser. Hey, I, I'll just, uh, you know, I, I, I liked your uh, idea on having a more specialized meeting for it. So if, if, if there's if that's the way we're going to go, I think that's the best way. I think it gives us the most time where we can comment on it and then also open it up to our residents because I think a lot has to be said. And I think not only our residents, but their customers uh, deserve a chance to voice some opinion here. And and I'll, I'll save my greater points for that meeting, but uh, I would like to see that happen. And, and, and also, though, thank you for everybody who's working so hard, especially uh, Deputy Mayor and yourself, Mr. Mayor, and of course, all our first responders who over the last few months has had it pretty rough and it hasn't stopped here. So uh, thanks to everybody. Anyone else wish to comment? All right, uh, moving on, I'm going to open up to public comment on agenda items only. Uh, if anyone from the public wishes to be heard on any items on the agenda, please use the Q&A function on the Zoom uh, to uh, get yourself up in the queue. And with the help of uh, Apu, we will get everything opened and answered. All right. And seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment portion uh, of the meeting and move on to our administrator's report. Good evening, Mr. Basicolo, how are you, sir? Good evening, Mr. Mayor. A Couple of things I'd like to touch on, if I may. Bring up, I'm gonna start with one of our favorite topics, the Gomes Project. <laughs> we just issued his footing and foundation permits the end of last week. I spoke to him on Thursday or Friday. He said that he's still waiting to wrap up the financials, the pilot and the financial agreements. I spoke to Matt Jessup, our redevelopment attorney. Matt says that they're all in the hands of his lawyer. I'm waiting for Matt to get back to me to see where we are. But at the point that that is done, he can give us an update with a timeline now on exactly what's going to happen when. We do have a couple other issues there. The one house on Center Street, 22 Center Street, did have some asbestos in it that wasn't, wasn't removed. We had to bring another company, had to be brought in by the, by the applicant. Uh, they are cleaning it up. We should have results back in the next couple of days. He will then be issued a demo permit and that building and the one on Caldwell can both be taken down. So you should start seeing some real work going on, hopefully on the Gomes project. Uh, referring to what we call the Sachs project up in Milburn, um, there's a meeting on the 17th with their board of adjustments. And hopefully that is going to be the last. 
And then that project should be green lighted and ready to go. Uh, Larkin property, which is on the corner of Church Mall and, and Morris Avenue. Charlie's moving along. I think we're seeing, if you look, you're seeing progress every day. He's going to start having framing done probably in the next three, four weeks. So he's moving along very well, actually. Touching on a couple other things from engineering. Even all through this, what I thought was very interesting is we managed to pave New Brook and Benjamin, even though that we had the storms going on. We managed to get that cleaned up quick enough to be able to still do the paving. Uh, Tooker Avenue is scheduled for later this week. That also is by a grant, by the way. The roadside assistance program that we have, the bids were open today, and you'll see on our resolutions for tonight, that was awarded to Dunbar. Um, so that will be taken care of. Um, on zoning, I wanted to mention a couple of things. We had three properties that were in foreclosure that were actually purchased by private families, which is a good thing because they'll be cleaned up. We'll start seeing some activity there and it'll be much better for the township. We also out of zoning, just so everyone knows, we also had five violations issued. Uh, we had five notices left on door tags also. We had 17 AC permits done, 14 fence permits, and two walkways. I also want to mention, which I thought was interesting, we've collected from the past four months or so, we've collected $25,000 in sewer connection fees, which is considerably more than we would have if we hadn't done the uh, update on the ordinance. And that doesn't include any of the developments, the redevelopments, such as Gomes, Sachs, or Charlie. So we still have a bunch of money that's going to be coming in which will help us pay for any additional, um, what do you call that we need from Garwood? Floor rights. Floor rights, thank you, thank you. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to do is ask Robbie Betcher if he wanted to make any comment, because I know we've been out cleaning up around town. We've got a monumental task on our hands. And I know we put on there, we were trying to cut that off. I think it was the 19th, Robbie, if I'm correct? That's correct, John. And, and we realized, and we put that out there, just so everyone knows, we put that out there as a, a hopeful date. We were trying to get everything done by then. We realized that not everybody's going to be able to get the brush out in time or the tree limbs. We're not going to be able to pick them up on that date. So we're going to extend it to whatever we need to get it done. So I don't want anybody thinking that, you know, 19th comes and we're going to disappear. That's not going to happen. Uh, Robbie, would you like to comment anything on, on where we are going through town and trying to clean up and what we're doing? Yeah, just a brief update. Uh, so the storm that blew through Tuesday, August 4th of last week pretty much paralyzed the town to a, you know, for a certain period of time due to uh, uh, down trees, down wires, uh, pretty much coming out of the storm. Every main road in town was blocked. 85% of secondary roads and side streets were impassable. Uh, the fast moving storm pretty much ended uh, in, on the same day in the late afternoon. So immediately following the storm, DPW's first priority was to open as many streets as possible, beginning with the main arteries and then our secondary through streets in order for emergency services to reach every street in town uh, in case of other emergencies. There was a small portion of streets that remained blocked uh, because of down wires that were tangled in the trees that DPW had to set up barricades until JCPNL was able to remove the wires or clearly verify that the wires were dead before we could return, remove the trees and reopen that road. Um, by late Tuesday evening, just six hours after the storm ended, pretty much every street in town was passable with the exception of uh, the 12 streets that were involved with electrical wires tangled in the trees that we were still waiting for JCPNL. Uh, the following morning, Wednesday, August 5th, DPW immediately started the cleanup, removing debris from the curb. This also included residents with storm damage. DPW will continue to canvas the town on a daily basis, collecting debris with no set pattern of collection and no scheduled pickups. The collection process will continue up to the 19th and will be extended if necessary. Uh, we ask that residents make every attempt to have the storm debris at the curb by the 19th if possible, at which point uh, DPW can return to regular scheduled work. And uh, I just want to say that um, FD, Auxiliary, uh, and PD 
we really came together and worked very closely, which enabled us to accomplish getting this town open. And I feel pretty much uh, in a safe situation for emergency services to move around, you know, thanks to the communication between all three of us. Uh, kudos to all of them. We, I really uh, couldn't do it without them. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, one other thing, Chris, I wanted to mention, if I may, we ran a reverse auction today for our electric and our gas use. You will see that on the agenda tonight to be approved so that we can get the contract signed. Uh, this is something that we've done multiple times before. They're up, so we had to do it again. Uh, we did run gas this year, natural gas, which we haven't done in the past. And what that will do for us is we have a set price now. As everyone knows, in the wintertime, not only does our usage obviously go up, but the price fluctuates during the winter when the demand is high. This will level it out so that hopefully when Diane and I look at the budget for next year, we're going to be able to put a pretty accurate number on where we think gas is going to be, natural gas. So that was the last thing I wanted to bring up. Unless somebody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Hey, John, really quick. Um, just want to touch upon uh, two locations from Morris Avenue. If you're facing Spirit from the street, to the left, there's a therapy place. Um, just update up what's going on, what you guys got on that end. And then also the place next to Gruskin uh, to the left there, that landscaping place. I saw a lot of debris moved out and everything. Thank you. Yeah, the one the one by Gruskin, uh, landscaper bought that building and he's coming actually, he got the, the okay to do a bunch of work. That back lot, as you know, constantly flooded. We're, we went back there, Robbie had the guys back there. We actually found a drain that we were able to clean out. The problem is, even though we've done that, the pipe that leads all the way to the creek, when it gets to the creek, it's low. And what happens is once the creek fills, it fills the pipe back up. The water can't get out. So that's why Duffy's lot actually floods. It's better than it was, but it's it's never going to be dry unless we were willing to dig up that entire length, which is which is considerable, and put, put new piping in, which would cost a, a boatload of money, quite frankly. Um, he's done a nice job, though, at least cleaning that up. I think he's so regraded it. He's going to stone that. He tried to help Gruskin also. We also are going to put a little cut through for Gruskin. So when his lot starts to flood, he'll be able to go out through Duffy's and go up to the light in order to get out. It's very dangerous to try to cross Mars Avenue and make a left at that point. Going out to the light at Caldwell makes a lot more sense. So we did that to try to help him. The therapy place, unfortunately, I don't have any info on unless someone else does. Hi. Erica? And I, yeah, I just, uh, two things. First of all, there's somebody who was trying to comment during agenda items only and we missed them. So maybe we can let them comment. And second, I just wanted to thank Rob and John and everybody, PD, Fire, everybody that we've mentioned because in this time where everybody was obviously stressed out a lot of us were without power i was without cell service for three days so i was like off the grid it was a very strange experience and all i heard from people when i was back on the grid is what a great job locally all of our departments were doing and even when people were upset for them to take a minute to say that means a lot that means you guys were all doing a fantastic job so thanks to everybody because it, it was a rough go for a few days and you guys really did fantastic and thank you for all your hard work. And like I said, there's somebody trying to comment. So I don't know if we can let them in. They were trying to comment on an ordinance. They were, they're, they're sending messages in a queue. That's it. Anyone else wishing to comment? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Basicolo. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to go to that uh, resident. I saw he's got five indications here and I wanted to jump in while other people were talking, but unfortunately I closed that portion for the public and he's unfortunately gonna have to wait till the end when we do comments for the public on any governmental issue. Uh, you know, I try to leave enough time for any late stragglers to see if they can get in, but unfortunately that, you know, time did expire and I do that every meeting. Um, so I, we have no problem hearing it, but he's just going to have to wait till the end of the meeting. Uh, gotcha. I didn't know when he came in. I just saw it. So no, he did. Sure. He did. I have him. And he's, he's raising, he's being so good. He's raising his hand. He's making the comments and I get it. And I was going to give him a little shout out after all the comments, but unfortunately we have to wait till the end of the meeting. Um, 
moving on to our bid update, Mr. Scalera or Mr. Seidel, if you have anything you wish to share. Or both. Um, just wanted, uh, just really two, a uh, couple quick things and then I'll get to the bid report. Um, yeah, again, thank you guys. You know what, again, I'm on the outside looking in and, um, you know, Chris, Mayor, Chris Weber on Facebook, reaching out to everybody, um, getting out there and just seeing if anybody needs help or any answers to questions. John Cook, uh, when the, all the electricity was down, I know he was combing the parking lots, uh, had his team combing the parking lots and the, because everything was blacked out, you know, for the businesses and everything. And Carlo and Rob, again, you guys, again, just did an incredible job and, uh, uh, kudos to you guys. I just I can't thank you with a communication and being very proactive and uh, and doing it. So I just want to put that out there. Um, in regards to the Gomes property, uh, like John said, just looking across the street or driving by it, they have been going for the past two weeks and cleaning up uh, all the debris there. And it's a really great sight to see. Not that they're going once or twice a month, that they're going a couple times during the week. So. Uh, again, John, thank you. It's the persistency and patience um, of staying with it and making sure these projects are completed. Because again, it's just if we're just staying on them, the only reason why that's being done and moved is because John, I got to thank you again. Um, and Matt, um, you're on them. So don't let anybody, if they see nothing happening, but all of something, something happens because we've been pushing, you guys have been pushing them a lot. So uh, thank you guys again. Um, we, uh, so last month we did the grants. So we had 20 businesses. We did $1,500 in grants, um, to local eateries, uh, salons and, um, a couple learning centers. Uh, me and Scott went out and we delivered 1,500, I know workout places, uh, $1,500 checks to each place. They, they couldn't thank us enough. So, uh, we had our meeting <clears throat> last week and, uh, based upon the response, we're probably going to go do it again in uh, March, I mean, in March, in September, in the fall. So what will happen with that is uh, we are not going to re-give to the same people, but the people that did miss the opportunity to get the $1,500 grant money, um, we're going we're gonna to reach out to them again. And so helping them out again, because obviously this is not ending next month. So uh, we're going to be doing that. We have our marketing meeting next week. Uh, we're going to look for creative ways to help promote and market the local businesses that are open. Um, so we're meeting next week at our marketing, obviously for the last quarter. And it's very challenging right now because um, we, you know, we don't know what's happening. So we do take it month to month, week to week. Nothing's definite etched in stone, uh, but we will try to do something. I did meet with the, uh, the local chamber uh, last this past Monday. And again, we're just trying to get ideas what they're doing so we can collaborate and say, okay, maybe this will work in, in our town. Um, let me just take anything out. We have our bid meeting on August uh, uh, 25th. <clears throat> it's open to the public. Um, so if anybody wants any updates of what's going on with redevelopment, uh, with the streetscape, uh, marketing, it's a, and again, it's about an hour or so. It's a great place to get updated, uh, you know, what's happening. Um, just lastly, let me see what else I got here. I think that's really, unless Scott wants to add on a thing, but I know, um, thank you, Erica. Uh, last month, uh, Erica and the bid, uh, we applied for a $25,000 grant, a stigma-free uh, Springfield, and also the Business Improvement District of Springfield also put in for the grant. Uh, we're waiting to hear if we've been accepted. Once we're accepted, then it goes to another, the next stage in regards to getting the grant monies. It's $25,000 uh, per, um, uh, per, um, per grant that's put in. So I uh, just want to say thank you, Erica for all your help in regards to it. And then again, uh, we did put one in for the bid. Um, so we're, we're looking, we should know something by within the next month or so, if it's been gone to the next stage and everything. So I wanna thank you guys again, appreciate it. I think we'll move on to uh, uh, finance, but... Uh... Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, we're moving on to finance. Do I have a motion? <laughs> uh, I will make I will make a motion to accept the total uh, uh, payroll and invoices for the period of July fifteenth through August eleventh, twenty twenty, in the amount of eighteen million three hundred twenty-two thousand five hundred fifty-four thousand dollars and fifty cents. I do believe that's the largest amount that I have made a motion on, but uh, I'll wait for a second. Second it. Roll call, please. 
Raymond Kaiser. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Uh, we have uh, the July pool summary budget account status, July summary budget account uh, status, July revenue report, and Rogat McCarthy ban letter. Uh, unless anybody have any comments on it, I'll move that they be received and filed. Uh, moving on to minutes and reports. We have a motion. I'll make a motion um, to adopt special, regular, and executive meeting minutes of May 12th, 2020, as emailed. And the regular I meeting second. of May 26th. Oh, no, no, no worries. And I the second. regular meeting minutes. Okay, we have a second from uh, Woman Du Bois. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we have new business. We have no ordinances for second reading. We have three for first reading. Madam Clerk, can you please read the first ordinance by title? Yes, ordinance 2020-16. This ordinance amends the police department's vehicle services fees in chapter two of the township code. I'm gonna make a motion to adopt ordinance 2020-16 as read by Madam Clerk. Publicized in a local source, August 20th, 2020, with final hearing, September 8th, 2020. I keep jumping the gun, but I second. I get excited when I'm off of mute, sorry. Excellent. Um, there's a second. Do we have, a, have any discussion up here? Yeah, you know, I, I just wanna, I just wanna, you know, there's always, always, always um, a question of why there's so many police vehicles in that lot and um here you go those vehicles when we put those vehicles on the street for road services uh construction traffic parades whatever function we put them on there for we can bill 30 dollars an hour with a three hour minimum on those vehicles those vehicles have paid if you took them to auction they might be worth a thousand dollars the fact that they can drive, go and block an intersection, put some lights on and, and pay for themselves a hundred times over. That's why we have those cars in a lot and that's why we keep them. So um, this is a good thing. Agreed. Any other discussion? No, roll call please. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Kaiser? Yes. Mayor Capitis? Yes. Um, moving on to Ordinance 2020 17. Madam Clerk? 2020 17. This ordinance amends Chapter 20, Sewers of the Township Code, supplement Schedule A for sewer connection fees. I'll make a motion. To, oh, go ahead, Alex. Uh, I, I'll make a motion to adopt uh, Ordinance 2020-17 as read by Madam Clerk. I will second that. Okay, publication. The final publication in the local source on August 20th, 2020, with a final hearing on September 8th, 2020. Uh, where, where where was Huber? I can't believe he messed up that entire uh, ordinance reading. <laughs> <laughs> um. John, do you, uh, Mr. Basicolo, do you want to go on and just explain this real quick? I mean, I think you mentioned it before, but just to reiterate. Yeah, after we reviewed the ordinance that we originally had done, along with Craig, there was a there were several items that we had left out that we could capture. So this is just an addition to the sewer ordinance that we passed a while ago for the connection fees. Thank so you. That's why we did this. Any, go ahead. No, uh, John. John, that's. Uh, um, that's the rate. Can you ex just explain a little bit the raising of it? Did we cover the raising of the fees already or no? Yeah, we did that originally when we did the ordinance. Yes. Okay. All right. This, this again well, was no. more to cover special in instances. For instance, I think now, and Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going from memory a little bit, but now when we have a change in tenancy in a commercial property, we've got a sewer connection fee. If they add a bathroom, we got a sewer connection fee. These are things we did not have. And, and it's it's benefiting us tremendously. Again, you know what the flow rights cost us. So we're, we're putting this money 
to help us offset those flow rates. Craig, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say that it's 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 even even beyond the flow rights. We make capital improvements um, on a yearly basis to our infrastructure um, for our sewer conveyance system, and uh, that's where all of these monies goes. Between that um, and the possibility of more flow rights purchases, um, all of these things help offset those continuing and sometimes you know increasing costs over time. Uh, and this ordinance. All, all this does is just adds two things at the bottom of the list um, from the ordinance that was previously adopted. It really just adds uh, some clarity for office space, um, the, the, uh, the amount per square foot for office space, and also for um, spas, hair salons, and barbers. Uh, and the nice thing about that is, you know, now you, you don't, without those things specified, there'd have to be an interpretation of the ordinance and a determination made on a case-by-case -case basis. This gives folks out there something in black and white so they know exactly what it is and they can anticipate it when they're buying, selling, leasing or whatever else, thinking about coming into town. Sounds good, thank you for that. Any other questions? Uh, I, I don't think any other questions, just uh, once again, it was uh, it was a good ordinance that we instituted the other year and that we continue to improve upon. Certainly not infrastructure, certainly not a sexy topic, but when it fails, we see the devastation it causes. Just look at our electric grid the other day. So uh, once again, we're moving in the right direction. Excellent. Uh, roll call, please. Minnie Ming Kaiser. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Dubois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Uh, moving on to our third and final ordinance, Madam Clerk, please read the ordinance by title. Ordinance 202018. This ordinance amends the shade tree provisions of the Township Code. And I will make it in motion to adopt Ordinance 2020-18 as read by Madam Clerk with final public uh, publication in the local source on August 20th, 2020, with a final hearing on September 8th, 2020. I'll second. Action. is there any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment if I may. Sure. Um, this is our first kind of shot at this. So I'd like all of you before September 8th, just look through it, read it, see if you have any questions or comments or changes you'd like to see. What really kind of drove this, to be honest with you, is when, when I kind of walked in and saw some of our developers that would go into a lot and clear cut everything, the lot would be totally empty. There's no reason to do that. And I felt we needed a way to protect our, our tree and our canopy. So this is going to set some parameters on what you can cut, what it's going to cost, that type of thing. So again, we need to review it. And if there's changes or comments, we're certainly open to it. And I know Erica wanted us to look at that. So we finally got there. Excellent. Anyone else? Okay. Well, roll call. Comments for the okay. Roll call, please. Committee Min Kaiser. Yes. Committee Woman Dubois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Mayor Capitis? Yes. All right. I want to uh, go to our set next section, which is resolutions to be approved by consent agenda. I'll go through them now. If you want any pulled, please let me know. Resolutions 220, 203, 204, 205. 206, 207, 208, 209, 210, 211, 212, 213, 214, 215, 216. I'm going to pull. 216, 217, 218, 219, 220, 221, 222, 223, 224, 225, and 225 is the final one. Do I have a motion? I will make a motion to adopt resolutions 203, 
do 215 and 217 to 225. Do I have a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yeah. Committee Min Kaiser. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Okay. So, Ms. Donnelly, read resolution, please read resolution 220216. Okay, resolution 220216. This resolution approves salary increases for department head supervisors and certain non union employees. I will make a motion to adopt resolution 2020 216. Do I have a second? I will second 2020 216. Okay. Comments? Comments, you know, hey, I, I'm. I, I love all our employees dearly. They they work hard, every single one of them. Unfortunately, in the current climate that we currently are, uh, due to a, a, a pandemic, we're facing an economic catastrophe that likes that our country and state hasn't ever before seen. And when we passed our budget, I, I made it very clear that it, I, I, it would take a lot for me uh, uh, to move. We have very little wiggle room in discretionary spending, but this is one of those areas. And I just don't think this is the right move for our, our town. And, and even after consulting our, uh, our CFO who, who did, while she was earlier this year painting a gloom and doom picture, she has since said, hey, you know, we're probably in a better place, but uh, you know, at this time, I just don't think I can vote for this this year. Does anyone else wish to comment? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on that. You know, um, I, I understand everything that Alex is saying, um, but on the same token, these are the same people that are accessible to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're, we're, we're not giving them an exorbitant amount of money. There, there's not, this is not a four, six, 10% raise. This is a 2% raise and um I, i'm behind it of 100 percent, and i think that i don't personally think that our township is in that position where we um have to deny that i think that we're doing exceptionally well this year considering the circumstances and um i will vote for it i think that uh it's important to keep the ball rolling and get things back to normal Anyone else? Hearing none, roll call, please. Committee Min Kaiser. No. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, everybody. Moving on. Uh, discussion and action items. Do I have a motion? Uh, commitment Huber's not here. Would someone else like to do the uh, motion? I make, I make a motion to approve the Union County Memorandum of Understanding and Hold Harmless Agreement for Leaf Composting Facility. As a host community, the township will not be charged for leaf disposal. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, correspondence from New Jersey American Water. Petition for authorization to implement a tariff supplement establishing a distribution system improvement change. Virtual hearings on August 17th at 4.30 and 5.30. Information is on the website. Uh, I ask that this be received and filed. And with that, I would like to open up uh, the meeting to public comment on any governmental issue. Um, I, if you wish to make a comment, please use the Q&A. Um, function on your uh, Zoom. And I uh, would like to uh, please remember that you have three minutes to speak and please start off by saying your first and last name uh, as well as your address. And first we will go to Stephen. Stephen, good evening and thank you for being patient and waiting. Oh, thank you, I can talk. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Stephen Friedman. I live at, I reside at 17 Evergreen Avenue in Springfield, New Jersey, County of Union. I know I have three minutes to talk, so I'm gonna go fast. Uh, it was actually good to stay on the phone call. Uh, I got to hear the agenda, the ordinance being uh, proposed, all good stuff. And uh, I wanna thank you to all the supervisors and uh, the township leaders for making what was a perfect storm into a reasonable storm. Uh, I will say that DPW was outside my house on my street within 24 hours of the event. I wanna thank uh, that team for that, that was incredible. And I did go to work the day after and uh, the roads were pretty good enough to get by without popping a tire. So kudos to them, kudos to the auxiliary um, uh, who was out there till who knows what, probably past midnight from early in the morning. I wasn't able to be there the whole time, but to my colleagues, congratulations, oh, that was awesome. It was one of those moments where we all had to come together. So that was great. Um, what I have a question about, I'm gonna just pivot a little bit. Uh, I heard Chris Weber, committeeman Chris Weber and Alexander Kaiser talking about a raise for our supervisors and other personnel non-union. I think my perspective is uh, they deserve it. Um, even though the economy is, is tough at the moment and things seem bleak, um, like Mr. Weber said, uh, Mr. Weber said uh, it's only 2%. 2% of 100,000 is $2,000. So, um, Listen, I may not get a raise every year. Some people don't get raises at all. But um, if they need, if we need good people, it's always it's always nice to say thank you with a token of, of a little gratitude by paying a little extra. So I'm 100% for that. Uh, I wanted to just discuss briefly, I have a concern about an ordinance, uh, 321-3. I, I brought it to Linda Donnelly's attention the other day regarding feeding of animals, pets, Wildlife. What is your what is your concern? My question is: is the ordinance as I read it, uh, it kind of opposes what BH five six does, which is the nuisance uh, the board of health nuisance violation number seventeen. In it, there's uh, both of them kind of discuss, and maybe the attorney there could could help and review it. Uh, is the attorney Craig Dowd? Yes. Yeah, so uh, this question goes specifically probably to you and, and to those who maybe understand some of the Board of Health uh, matters. Right now you prohibit township people from feeding birds or any other wildlife on township property. That means no parks, no curbs. However, it doesn't really suggest that a person who owns a home, his own land, should be allowed to do the same thing. Because the idea behind it is that it brings vermin, it brings certain kinds of uh, animals to the area. Uh, and I think bird feeding should not be one that you throw on the ground and bring all the types of animals out there. It could be food, it could be toast. Um, those are things that are really not addressed in the ordinance regarding 3-21-3. Uh, so I had a discussion with the, well, I'm trying to reach out to our health department and it's very difficult getting a phone call back in. I'll, I'll conflate that with BH5-6, number 17, which states that no one can feed any animal, including cats. So it's written in two areas, I think, and I believe it should be for all residents as well. You should not be feeding wildlife on your property. And that's kind of how I'll end it. I, I would like for that to be reviewed. Again, it's Ordinance 321-3 and BH5-6, number 17. Mr. Friedman, I have a board of health meeting this week and I'm the liaison. Can you email me all of your concerns so that I can Definitely. try to bring it up and get you some clarification? Definitely. Well, it, it goes beyond the clarification in that the writing is misleading. It's the interpretation can be, and again, you just change the sewer fees ordinance or resolution uh, because the interpretation wasn't there. So I think we need some interpretation to the ordinance for it to be reviewed. Just email me everything and I'll look into it and get back to you after we have that meeting. If I'm talking rushed, it's because I only probably have 30 seconds left. No, and, and fine, and Mr. Friedman, and, and your request as you see as you see it is, is nothing extravagant in or out of the ordinary. And as committee woman Du Bois suggested, if you wanna just follow up offline about your specific concerns of, about the ordinances and, and whatnot, 
we can certainly have a conversation about, you know, the discrepancies, if there, if you will, and if changes need to be made, of course, and, and further considerations need to be made, of course, we'll, we'll act applicably. And that's, that's, that's something that we're going to have to talk to the Board of Health about. And, and as, as Erica says, she's the liaison, we'll, we'll bring our attorney into the, into the conversation. And if there's changes to be made and, and revisions to be made, we'll certainly consider them. Well, thank you. I, I reserve my time for someone else. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have one more. I don't know if she's still here or wanted to make a comment. Um, Barbara, Barbara, are you still with us? Sometimes I do this. I feel like a radio DJ, a radio talk show host. Barbara, you're on the line. Is she here, Barbara? Yes, she's Barbara, here. you're on mute. Oh, okay. Um, Can you say your name and address for the record? Barbara Rappaport, 50 Country Club Lane. Um, I have a couple of issues and yes, everybody worked very hard and did what they could, I suppose, because somehow on my side of town, uh, we didn't see anybody, anybody for at least three days, I'd say. I actually had to go out and the first um, service people I saw were from Ohio and, uh, where was the other one? Georgia. Whatever. Yeah, and um, luckily I was wearing my mask. So anyway, that's a joke because they're still on Just the quarantine on point, list. Anyway, um, my issue is this, that, um, Union County, let's see, JCP and L users, there were um, 18,687 outages and for PSE&G, 22,969. I know supposedly we have this representative, Carol, I didn't get her last name, we have a meeting, but don't you think it's time since, especially, well, I don't know, JCP and L, I don't know if there are bigger issue than PSC and G that the county get together, the freeholders and try to do something and bring it to the BPU, that something has got to be done to see that JCP and L is meeting the standards that the uh, BPU actually establishes for utilities under their uh, um, general, uh, not management, but supervision, uh, and that the board it does, the Board of Public Utilities is supposed to do more than just raise rates. I mean, it's good that uh, it seems that JCP and L wants to do, you want to see if they'll do some kind of generator program, but that's not very good advertising, I don't think, for them or for uh you know springfield to say hey yeah you buy a house here and we've got a deal on a generator for you and so you know it's at the point that i think this has become a county issue and it should involve um the bpu and the governor um i know something about the bpu because uh my mother for many years worked for the bpu and uh as an employee of the state, not as somebody who got the plum jobs there. So that's one of my issues. The response was slow. And, and our response was very slow. Yes. Another issue was the fact that we were part of the detour on Country Club Lane when part of South Springfield Avenue was shut down. And the next time that's done, we're just like, you know, a little horseshoe there. I wish the police would at least put kind of a speed monitor there because we have, we do have kids on our street oh, and speed. people were speeding around. They didn't know. And then all of a sudden they hit the curve or, or they hit the curve, which is right in front of our house, just about. And they they were just really really going fast and you know the police weren't out there and i feel that there should have been some kind of um you know one of the 
measure signs you have regarding the speed. Okay, and that was number two. And number three is um, our neighbors across the street um, from our house at 50 Country Club were away and I believe it's a township tree, but it's been down since last Tuesday and nothing's been done. And um, so, okay, you guys got it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rappaport. We definitely appreciate your comments. Um, I, I, I would certainly have a concern too with the, with the speeding. I, I get it that sometimes when you're detoured, it's frustrating, but you, I, I hope you understand and I appreciate your patience that this was, this was certainly not a Springfield problem. This was a New Jersey problem. There were a Union County problem. There were power lines and, and, and roadblocks up all over our county and all over our state. Well, that's uh, why it has to be a group. That's why little uh, Springfield I, 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 by Ms. itself just can't. Ms. Rappaport, I, I, I listen to you and I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm responding now. Okay. I, I listened to all your comments and concerns, every one of them, and I was taking notes and I want to respond to them all, you know, for the speeders and, the, and uh, you know, that's certainly something. If you see somebody speeding, you normally call 911. Unfortunately, you know, our police were, were out there all over town and, and, you know, perhaps we could have got some, you know, uh, also with the roadblocks and things like that. People certainly get frustrated. It was, it was a very busy time for everyone. Um, and your concerns about the county uh, and those other concerns, um, th those are very relevant and those are things that we've been talking about. Um, I've certainly having conversations with our representative with and I've, I've had individual conversations with committee members about it, uh, but that's kind of what this meeting is with, with Carol Bianchi, who is going to be our JCPNL rep. Now, our first priority was restoring power. And as much as you know that delay that took, now when the power is finally restored and, and, and we're now up and running, now it's time to debrief. Now it's time to talk about plans moving forward. Now it's time to talk about and, and, and hearing the suggestions of things that, that we can do. Obviously, uh, Deputy Mayor Weber brought up the generators. You're bringing up some county efforts. So hopefully uh, when we do have that special meeting, we'll definitely have it advertised and, and you can bring up your comments again and we can, we can really take our deep dive and, and really find a, uh, a solution to our issue um, for sure. But I appreciate your comments and I, I'm glad you and your husband are safe. And, um, and, and thank you very much for your comments. Okay. Um, looking at the queue. And seeing no more in the queue, I'm going to close the public comment section of the meeting. Um, and I see that we do have an executive session. Um, Madam Clerk, can you please read the motion? Yes, resolution 81120, whereas Article 6 of the Open Public Meetings Act provides that a public body may hold a closed session. And whereas the Township Committee will during this meeting enter into discussion of the following matters, attorney client privilege, potential purchase, lease, or acquisition of real property. Whereas the matters to be discussed in closed session are to remain in the strictest of confidence by all township committee members in furtherance of their fiduciary duties to the township. Now, therefore, be it resolved, matters discussed at this meeting will be released to the public when the reasons for discussing and acting upon them in closed session no longer exists. I make the motion to go in executive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's uh, go to executive and come back um, to hear when we're done. Okay, so Thank you very much, everybody. Can we close this up? Okay.
Hello, Mr. Weber. Hello, Mrs. Du Bois. I'm in Jersey City at tryouts for a new team for Deanna right now. <laughs> oh, man, a new way to get Corona. <laughs> I think the meeting is stuck. I'm very harder. distant. I'm in Jersey City. A new way to come home with a new transmittable. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> You know, listen. It's uh, you know at this point right now, you know, we play. We've played four weeks of softball. We played numerous teams. Yeah. You know, everybody seems to be keeping it as safe as they reasonably can when they're playing. The girl. Uh, hey, you know our, our situation. Like all this meeting no. back to order. I have Linda. I have Linda on speakerphone. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I have a second. Okay. So we have uh, Deputy Mayor Weber with the motion, Committee okay. Kaiser with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night, everyone.